I'm Africa Harrigan for the Legit Highlight. The Committee on Culture, Historic Preservation, Youth and Recreation held a meeting at the Capitol Building to discuss the development of a national sports policy for the Virgin Islands. Considering that this is your first meeting you held for the development of a national sports policy for the Virgin Islands, what is the next step into bringing this into fruition? Well, uh, this morning we had testimony from the various stakeholders. We have a meeting scheduled for St. Croix, where we'll do the same. And from those testimonies and engagement, we'll sit down with the Department of Sports and Recreation and all the stakeholders and fine-tune the bill draft that I put in for a sports policy for the Virgin Islands of the United States. There was no one that was not in agreement that the policy was necessary. This is something that has been uh, advocated for for some time and that it was very important that we engage uh, those entities uh, in doing this in 2014. So it is my desire and hope that the sports policy will come to fruition in this term and not be uh, something up in the air, in a cloud, uh, waiting to be enacted. The Virgin Islands is poised uh, for a sports policy compared to many other areas of the world. Um, we have, over the decades, done a lot in the area of sports, but we need a comprehensive approach to how we promote uh, a sports policy and in all facets from recreation to sports activity to training to our athletes to our, our national identity and how uh, our sportsmen and women are, are taken care of and they as ambassadors to the territory represent us. We can do better and we have the framework already in place. We have some legislation that have been uh, put in place like with the Department of Education and uh, Sports and Recreation, but now comprehensive approach to a po uh, sports policy is the desire of the stakeholders, and I'll do just that. Presently on St. Thomas, there are three tennis courts and only two of them are located at the University of the Virgin Islands. Because of the lack of tennis courts, tennis and after school programs are very minimal. What fundraising ideas would you have to help raise money for the Tennis Association? Well, one of the things uh, for tennis in the territory, we need to be able to attract people from the mainland. I know I'm a big fan of Venus and Serena Williams and the USTA, the U.S. Tennis Association. Somehow I believe the VI Tennis Association can get in touch with the USTA and see how we can, see if we can get those superstars down here and have a clinic, a tennis clinic. And then they can have an exhibition game where we charge uh, spectators and tennis lovers to come in and, 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 and look at that. And I'm sure it can be done. I believe those ladies would find some time to come to the Virgin Islands and assist us. Plus, we have colleges uh, that, that have tennis programs. They also can come down. Uh, I know the Tennis Association just got the lease to put up the courts over at uh, over Doria Ken in the Nazareth Bay area. And I'm looking forward for that, that we can get that. And at that court, then we'll be able to again bring exhibition games down and probably put up a tournament something that we have tournaments in the Caribbean, you know, South America, we have temperature here all year round. And I believe working through that mechanism, we should be able to raise some funds. Are you in support of the Virgin Islands developing a national sports policy and why? Oh, I'm definitely in support of it. And Dr. Harrigan, who is right now advancing that cause here at the legislature, I have been in support of his efforts for many years, and precisely because we can see it. Uh, just turn on ESPN, turn on any of these sports channels, and you will find that sports fans are, are drivers of economies. Uh, look at Paradise Point. I'm not Paradise Point. Paradise Jam. <laughs> Well, that's a plug for Paradise Point. Paradise Jam brings in scores of fans from different uh, school basketball teams. And they go out to the Main Street. They go out to 
I won't give them a plug again. They go out to Havenside. They go to all these places. And what do they do? They leave money in our economy. And so what I've asked these uh, persons who are testifying here today is to put together for us things that we can understand, such as numbers. So correlate what uh, investing into the sports would mean for our economy. We do it all the time. The, the legislature appropriates money for the little leagues. We find that they, uh, when the children are traveling, their parents are traveling, and so therefore, again, more spending. So once people understand the correlation between what sports could do for an economy, I believe that more people would be supporting an investment in that area. Lawmakers also considered Bill Number 30-0321, an act to erect a statue of Emil Griffith, a world boxing champion, to be placed in the Emil Griffith Park. Tell us a little bit about Bill Number 30-0321. Why is it important to erect a statue of Emil Griffith? Well, Emil Griffith made substantial and significant contributions in the field of sports. Uh, in the modern period, Emil Griffith was a prolific boxer. He um, put the Virgin Islands on the map in the 20th century in regards to boxing and sports, and that from a small territory, um, a world athlete was produced and uh, took the arena. And of course, this occurred in New York. And Madison Square Garden was one of those arenas where Emil Griffith made world record. So the, in the back in the 60s, this community, a grateful community, named the Emil Griffith Park in his honor. And uh, it was a creation from a landfill area. And it has served this community over the decades. And it's in badly need of an upgrade of image. We have a sign there that speaks to this national hero, our territorial hero. And uh, we have a planter there that has weeds in it, so letters missing. And this is in the corridor of downtown Charlotte Amley. And this, if this is how we treat our world-class athletes, and we're talking about cultural policy, then shame on us. So this bill seeks to improve and to, in fact, create the image, upgrade the image, and likewise give due recognition to a man who made world history in sports. Committee members approved the bill and it will be forwarded to the Committee on Rules and Judiciary for further consideration. Thank you for tuning in to Legit's coverage of the Committee on Culture, Historic Preservation, Youth and Recreation. Also, you can follow the happenings at the legislature on YouTube. Subscribe to LegVI1 or on Twitter at LegislatureVI. Like us on Facebook at 30th Legislature. I'm Africa Harrigan for Legit TV.